Ah, whatever, whatever. We'll come back to that later. Don't understand it. So we'll just press on. But you have sold the shares for six. And there is the six. So we've got an increase in the NCI. We're selling them a slice. The NCI balance is going up. <coughs> We're selling them a slice. We're selling them 10% of the net assets and the full goodwill. They are getting a stake of the business. The transaction is happening at the reporting date. How much are the net assets at the reporting day? 75. The impairment review has taken place, but strictly speaking, that's irrelevant because there was no impairment lost anyway. Goodwill is 76. <coughs> Seventy five, seventy six, hundred and fifty one, fifteen thousand one hundred. Nine thousand one hundred. Now Strictly, strictly speaking, I hesitate to call it a profit or a loss because it is not deemed to be a profit or a loss because you have transacted within equity, you've sold something to your own NCI, so that is within the group. What does this difference make you feel, though? Happy or sad? Sad. Yeah. So this is 9,100, which is negative. Yeah, that's a negative, and that is going to go to reduce your working six of the components of equity, and that's going to increase your working four NCI, and I better post both of those. So here's my working six, and I have got negative 9,100. I've got a difference on a control to control. And that difference has come from working seven. And in my NCI calculation, which didn't get off to a fantastic start, um, in my NCI calculation, I have got a control, uh, I have got a, and I've got an increase, haven't I, sorry? Uh, I've got a, a control to control, but it's an, an, an increase. And I just lost what that number is. And the increase in the NCI is 15,100. It's 15,100. Ladies and gentlemen, I've almost finished. I haven't quite finished, but I have almost finished. I certainly finished the technical stuff, so let me go to a fresh sheet of paper and open up a group statement of financial position. The investment disappears, so the investment becomes goodwill. The goodwill is subject to an impairment review, but doesn't get written off. The non-current assets are basically cross-cast. Now, what will happen in every other question is that you will then have working to fair value adjustments. But in this particular question, what happens in working to is that at the year end, the fair value adjustments have disappeared. But in every other question, you get that. Now, I make that 210. No current accounts, no uh, pups, no current accounts, no pups. So that represents your assets. The shares are the parent company only. 
So the shares are the parent company only. Uh, retained earnings, I don't know and I don't care. Other components of equity, um, or the other way around, it doesn't really matter. NCI, I don't know and I don't care. Leave a space, leave a space. I think there's a very important distinction between equity and liabilities. 40 plus 25. We are picking up a couple of marks for just doing this. Now, I'm pausing for two different reasons. I'm pausing for two different reasons. If I were to spend the next five minutes adding everything up, my balance sheet wouldn't balance. If I were to spend five minutes adding everything up, I wouldn't be earning any extra marks at all. This is how you leave an exam answer. You don't add up working five, you don't add up retained earnings, you don't add up NCI, there'll be two subsidiaries in the NCI, you don't add up the balance sheet, because there are no marks in the marking guide for doing so. If there were marks for just adding things up, I would do it. But there aren't. If I were to add it up, it wouldn't balance anyway. That would make me panic. I would then go back and start changing things which actually are correct. I have done nothing wrong. Well, it's just there's something I haven't done right. There's something that I've missed out. There's something that I've not processed. There's something that I've not dealt with. So it's an error of omission. Everything that I have done is fine and I stand by. Now, the vast majority of you are tired thinking about going home. <laughs> but there is a small technical point which I'm going to conclude on. Do you know what that is about? Yes. Yeah, it's, about, it's partly about the 10,000. Now, when we say 10,000, what do we mean by the 10,000? When I calculated goodwill, I used the figure of 120, but the figure in the balance sheet is 130, so that's a difference of... Ten. And that doesn't quite work out because, you know, you should cancel the whole of the 130 and we've only taken 120. But do you know what? There's a second issue. What's the second issue? The last sentence, which I said I didn't understand. Let me read it again. The 6,000 have been recorded as a credit against the investment. You shouldn't do that. If, you, if you've got sale proceeds, you don't credit the investment. Go to that control, control. You shouldn't have credited the investment. So really, the investment isn't 130. Because that 130 has had six deducted from it. So really, the investment on the balance sheet is 136. And I can see not many people smiling. So, per the question, you've got the investment. You per the question, you've got the investment fair value through profit and loss account at one thirty. We're going to add back the 6 as a correction which means the figure should have been 136 the cost which has gone to the goodwill calculation is 120 so this means there is 16 16 is the magic number The 
the investment per the question is 130, but actually it should be 136. Now, maybe, maybe now this is the most important point and I can slow down. When I bought the investment, I bought it for 120. It should be on the balance sheet at 136. Why did it go up by 16? Fair value gain. The investment is called a fair value through P&L investment. So having bought the investment, what the parent company has done is revalue that investment upwards by 16. But in the group accounts, the whole investment disappears. So if in the group accounts, the whole investment disappears, in the group accounts, the gain on that investment must also disappear. If the question had been correct, the question would have said the investment was 136 on the balance sheet. We've taken only 120 into the goodwill, and the other 16 is made up of the gain that's been recognized by the parent. If I am the parent, I am correct to recognize the gain. But I'm the group. In the group accounts, the investment doesn't exist. So in the group accounts, that gain doesn't exist. You've got to get rid of the 16. And as the gain has gone in working five, so we are removing it from working five. As the gain has gone from working five, so we are removing it from working five. This is another reason for not adding everything up, because you sometimes get inspiration. So let's call this working eight. Let's call this working. Eight, we can remove the gain. Of course, there is a typed answer at the back, and that is another reason why I'm not going to bother to add everything up. My final reason for not adding it, my final reason for not adding everything up, is that according to my phone, it is now five past six. Any questions on <coughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's Friday. It's the end of a week. It's the beginning of the weekend. Yeah? So I hope you have a cracking weekend. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at half past nine. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at half past nine. Yeah. Please remember to bring your notes with you, your revision material with you. Please remember to bring your enthusiasm, commitment as well. And your homework for tonight, your homework for tonight is to rest. Yeah, please. Yeah. Make sure you have something to eat. Make sure you go to sleep. Yeah. It's got a long day tomorrow, long day on Sunday. I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.